Hey there, good morning. Welcome back to my live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today is August 11th, 2018. And I call this Fritz and Friends. I'm here to write some code, and I hope you enjoy writing some code with me. Uh, we've got a couple friends there in the chat room already. Good morning, Stool Penner, and there's Moz, Ozcoder, and Coded Beard. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be, wherever you are. And for those of you watching on YouTube, good time in the future? Whatever. It's recorded. Enjoy. Um, and there's Brendan. Hey, good morning. So I took some time off yesterday. I had, uh, my daughters had a little riding competition. They do horseback riding. And they had a competition yesterday morning that, uh, a little practice um, scrimmage with a couple other folks. And uh, it was only my younger daughter that was competing, and she took home a blue ribbon. So I'm, I'm a happy dad to see that, of course. It doesn't matter how she does, but it's always really cool to see when your kids do well. Hey, Yoda Droid and aspiring DevOps guru. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, I've got some new music to share today. Um, oh, and I've got, uh, gosh, I mentioned the hat in the cancellation video. I found this cool Ford Mustang hat. I thought that was pretty neat there with the horse and the, the two bars. And it, it had a Ford logo on it. I'm like, all right, it must be real. So uh, I made sure to pick this up. Um, our friend Carl Franklin released a new song for music to flow by. Uh, let me go over to that website. Um, <laughs> music to flow by dot com. I want to make sure that you see this. He put out brand new, brand new song. So if you go to Music to Flow By, you get this website. <clears throat> if you scroll down here, you can download the app for uh, iOS, for Android, and there's information on uh, Facebook and Twitter. But if you click through to dub 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 here, hey, thanks so much for the host code rushed. You can see here's the list of the current songs that are available, and you can click through to get your subscription. He's down. He's uh, publishing a new track every three months, and he just released this one, song number 17, uh, called Judson. If everyone demanded peace instead of another television set, then there'd be peace from John Lennon. That's a neat quote. So we're going to play that in the background today. This is Judson. So thanks so much, Carl, for letting us play your music here in the background while we're writing code. And as you can read in the in the description up top here, um, it's this is scientifically designed with tempos between 60 to 80 beats per minute, about 25 minute long track, and it'll get you in the groove and get you focused on whatever task you may be working on. So we're going to get focused on some coding here today. Thanks so much, Carl. And tell you what. Ladies and gentlemen, um, today's also Carl's birthday. So uh, why don't we run over to Twitter real quick and let's wish Carl a happy birthday. Uh, what the heck is this? That's terrible. No, don't want to see that. Um, happy birthday at Carl Franklin. We love your music to code by. Let's actually use the uh, the Twitter handle there. Music to flow by. Um, and uh, and play it whenever we're coding together on Twitch. All right, there we go. Might be a little bit loud. I'm still adjusting the levels for this song. Let me just back it off a smidge. There we go. All right. So go ahead, let Carl know that uh, that you enjoy his music. Drop him a big thank you there on Twitter. Um, good morning, Alfonso. Um, and here I was mixing up times. It was like, it's 2.30, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, we're good. Um, all right, so there's our music to flow by. Um, we talked about the hat. Uh, this... Friday, where everything's coming together for our uh, for our Xamarin workshop. We're going to build our first Android app together with some of the folks from the Xamarin teams at Microsoft. I've got, I think I've got some Xamarin University folks. I've got some uh, cloud developer advocates. Um, 
I'm waiting for final confirmation on exactly who is joining us. Um, James Montemagno will be will be part of that. Uh, it's going to be a great day. You're going to learn how to use C Sharp to build an Android app. And it's all with free tools. Visual Studio Community, the Android SDK. You don't need anything special or paid in order to get started with what we're doing on Friday. So I hope you join us. Um, if not, of course, the recording will be on YouTube a little bit later. But everything we're doing, you'll be able to work on whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux and build an Android app. So I'm really looking forward to that. I need to spend more time with building Android apps and getting into mobile development. I've, I've been behind the cloud in the web server so much of my career that, it, that uh, spending some time building mobile apps, I think, would be a lot of fun. Hey, good morning, Smap. All right. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to drill down into our core wiki project. And from the title of today's stream, we're going to take a look at this pull request from Monkey TH, introducing Mediator to Core Wiki. Now, from our from our discussion with uh, Jimmy Bogard during the architecture workshop, Jimmy had a little bit of problems with his network connection. Uh, oh my gosh! Thanks so much for, to our followers, Joe Counter and Performench. Nice. Um, we want, I wanted to circle back around, spend some time on, on really digging into this. Let's get in a little bit past some of the basics that Jimmy showed us, and then we can invite him back to join us and go through some of the more advanced things. Let me take a quick look at the chat room here. Might be just my earphones, but can't hear the music even before you changed the levels. Uh, you can't hear the music at all, really. pushing that up a little bit more. How's that? Music is fine, says Ancient Coder. Interesting. Some people can hear it and some people cannot. It's not left or right balanced. Now it's louder. All right, I'll back it back down just a smidge. All right. All right. Uh, DK, Dr. Narf, nice, Dr. Narf 98, thank you, welcome, welcome to the show, uh, and uh, you're able to hear it, okay. Um, if you could sometime do the same with iOS, that would be nice, the trick with doing it with iOS is you need to be, you need somewhere in your pipeline to have a Mac, and, um, you need to pay for a developer subscription, with uh, with Apple. So as a starter to get people in the door, I want to start with Android, but I'll take that under under advisement that we want to circle around and look at iOS. That might be a good follow up. All right, let's um, let's dig into this a little bit. Now, Mediator implements and shows the CQRS pattern. I'm going to come over here to our code screen. And the CQRS pattern is a way for us, if you haven't seen this, if you aren't familiar with that architectural pattern, it's a way for you to break up the way that you interact with your data storage. Um, let me open PowerPoint and let's draw some, let's draw some pictures real quick to make sure that we're all on the same page here because PowerPoint is really easy to draw some, some diagrams here. All right, let's do this and one of these. Get rid of all of that. And uh, let's see, I want some, there we go, shapes. So, right, typically you have, where's that can, right? Typically you have, in a normal application, you have some sort of a database, right? And in thinking about core wiki, our core wiki application, we have a website, and that's the core wiki project. And we're just making requests directly from core wiki into that database. And it's good for a small application, for something that is really just create, read, update, and delete. 
and it doesn't have significant pressure on it. There aren't scale requirements that we're fighting, we're dealing with. This isn't too bad. It's a very simple architecture. It's something where we can set up a repository pattern and easily make those requests back and forth to the database, whether it's updating records, inserting new records, deleting records, reading records. But an interesting thing happens when you start to see significant pressure on that website and you have people <clears throat> updating records that you're trying to read, your database administrator is going to go a little crazy because things happen like read and write locks on those data records, right? When, when it's trying to insert a record, if you're using transactions, you're going to lock that row or even that page in the database, which is a collection of rows. And that will prevent other folks from being able to read the database, read that selection of data. So they'll get a little bit of a delay. Now there's ways around this, there's ways to fix this. And a typical way that you'll see people fix this is that they will, they'll come through and they will introduce caching, right? So instead of making a request directly against the database, and let's even change the color of this. Um, instead of making a request directly against the database, they'll come through and they'll make requests from their website into the cache and then the cache if the value isn't there into the database. And our friend Steve Smith, who, who showed us um, clean architecture during the architecture workshop, showed us a little bit, um, it showed us about how to bring in the repository pattern, how to bring in a cleaner separation of objects. And one of the things that Steve really likes that he's he's worked with is something that he calls a caching repository where that repository knows how to reach into the cache and fetch data from there. And if the cache isn't loaded, load it up and then send all subsequent requests into the cache. Now that's nice. You've still got a very simple pattern here and it's easy then to have your, your, your data folks, your data dudes and dudettes build out the interaction between cache and database so that the folks that are building your website and working on that can just make a request through the, through that repository and they don't have to think about those data interactions. You had your mug stolen off your desk at work. What? What is that? Moz! Oh, that's terrible! It, I think it was this mug is what she's referring to. Works on my machine, ship it! Oh, Moz! Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, alright. So, I found a guest article from for MSDN from 2003 describing the same mechanism for caching. There you go. Steve Smith. So this is a this is a simple architecture, but what's what starts to happen is your backend server that is hosting your website and is in is doing that caching, you start to feel memory pressure. And that memory cache grows and can grow so big that you don't have any more memory on the on the website. So what do you do? Well, you want to move that cache then somewhere else. And what folks have figured out is we can make this a little bit more horizontal and be able to set up multiple instances of cache. And then you end up doing your reads against that cache. Right, so let's insert a text box. Where's my text box? I want a text box. There it is. Right? So I want to do my read operations, and they come against this. So you end up with all of your reads or your queries going against some level of caching that comes from your main transactional database. And let's make this... And it's not even... Let's not even pigeonhole it into the database. Data store. So then the question becomes... Well, how do I update the cache and update my database at the same time when clearly they have two different sets of needs? Um, black market mugs. 
Uh, yes, they're, they're, t they're grabbing that mug and taking off. That's a sh- Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Moz. Um, let me ask you, Moz, before... If, if you're going to order another one, I, I, I'm thrilled if you want to. Um, we've made the mug with the blue logo. I have five other colors of the logo in black, purple, brown. I think there's even a red in there. Um, do you think I should put together another color and put make that available for the logo? Um, let me see if I can find that real quick. It is. Da, 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 da. I have the picture. I have the picture. Um, this one. One second here, and I will show you what I've got. There it is. So I've got all of those. You like purple? I think that's fine. So we'll. So what I'll do is. <clears throat> there's the purple, and there's also this kind of burgundy up top. We'll soon need a rainbow mug theme, says Sanad Meskin. Um, sure, that'd be that'd be cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. Functions to the rescue. Well, not. Hang on. We'll come back to that. We'll come back. Is the mug available for purchase in the UK? Yes. There's actually so let me show you this, and I will I will get that purple loaded onto the uh, onto the website. Let me go back over here. If we go to if you go to the channel, and if we scroll down, finish loading here, Twitch. Come on, there's more to the website. Hello, where are my panels? Why isn't it showing any of my panels? Are th aren't there panels on my Twitch screen? It's showing them for you. It should be on the panel. There's a panel for the store. There we go. Yeah. So if you click through to the store, it'll ship everywhere. Um, and right now it only has the blue. But you you can get uh, you can get it on I think I had had them put it on mugs, uh, phone cases, uh, laptop backing. So, um, but I will I will load that purple one out there for you, Moz, so that you can order that. I'll take care of that right after right after we're done here together. I'm so sorry to hear that. In fact, uh. uh Add purple logo to store. Um, do the black as well. Okay. No problem. Um, and let's do this. Uh, And I'm going to There we go. All right. Um There we go. Good. All right. So this is how we read from the from the database. And th these are queries, right? That we're running, right? Reads and this is when we're we're querying the database. And um, how do we update those? Now, um, so all color options with it? Well, I, I'm going to do the black and I'm going to do the purple. And we'll push those out there as options. Okay. No problem, Moz. Happy to support you. Okay. So how do we get that updated? And, and right, this is where the other side comes in, the other side of this, where we have a little bit of processing that needs to happen. And that processing that's going to happen is different. We want to issue some commands that will do that update. 
And those commands are not only going to update, and let's not bring it in at this exact same point, let's bring it in from the side here. Let's do this. Look at this, architecture diagrams on the fly. These com we're going to have these commands that we want to issue that actually put the stuff into the database, but not just put it into the database, but also update our cache. So, right, when we want to do a write, or we want to issue a command, right, we're going to push it through some sort of a command processor that's going to decide how to appropriately execute the commands against the authoritative source, the transactional data store. And once that authoritative source is updated, go notify the cache, hey, you need to be updated, and or here's some new data for you to put into your cache. You know, you know how to manage your cache. You process that appropriately. Here's the new information for you. This is CQRS. Command query, responsibility, separation. Sometimes you'll hear segregation, but I think separation is a little bit easier for folks that aren't familiar or aren't uh, English first speakers. So we're separating our queries and commands into two separate responsibilities. And those two separate pieces can be managed as separate verticals, as separate machines, as separate services that may that, that could all live within one website or you could start to break them out and put them on separate machines now i'm not going to get into breaking them into separate machines yet we'll put them all in one place now what mediator does mediator gives us a way for us to build a clean read or query mechanism along with a clean write and command mechanism to deliver those DTOs that we want to paint on screen or turn back into commands to send over to our database. Write through cache. No, we don't want to write through the cache dark tower builder because the cache, it, it's a cache. Cache can expire. Cache, cache can go can, can go out of sync with the transactional data store. Even if it's for a split second, it can go out of sync. We want to make our issue our commands directly on that transactional data store. So we're working with that authoritative source first. And once we have a confirmation that we have interacted with that transactional data store properly, then let's go update our cache. And if it takes an extra second to update the cache, but our authoritative source is correct, that should be pretty good. Hey, uh, Chris Jones, good to see you. Um, and McNerdius, yo, good to see you too. All right, so this is where we're going with CQRS, right? This is the the simple default uh, description of what the architecture is. It is more complex. It does take a little bit more um, architecture work to get it up and running. It's not something that I would use for a simple accounting website that has five, ten people at my app, at my workplace using. But when you get into a couple hundred people and you have significant workflows that you need to manage, um, and you start to feel pressure on your websites, you could consider this. Will the cache store the data even if the user is offline? So the cache isn't just user information cache, right? It's application cache. So if the website doesn't have anybody visiting, I would still leave my cache primed. And I'm using the term cache generically, right? Just like I changed this to transactional data store. It could be a database. It could be Azure table storage. It could be Azure storage with JSON files written to disk. The cache could be an in-memory data store, something like uh, like memcache, right? That's an in-memory data store. But it could also be some NoSQL databases that are properly structured or 
more accurately structured for the types of read operations that I want to do. Something like a MongoDB is great for this because I can really set up, you know, here's everything to paint one page structured appropriately as a document with an appropriate key for that one page that I want to paint. So these could be read read first types of databases like MongoDB. Uh, oh, thank you, Ozcoder. I appreciate that. You're right, Tizarnal. It could just be flat text files. That's a that's a very good point. It could be HTML files that you're writing to disk, right? You go ahead and after the command is processed, you know what? We know what that HTML file should look like. Let's just write a new one to disk, and then the website just serves static HTML. That's cool too. That works great. Um, it could be offline storage that you update when you're online again. Absolutely. The, and, and the reason why this, this server-side cache is, um, I'm referring to it as cache, is because depending on your architecture, your uh, scenario, it could be all kinds of different technologies. Choose the implementation that works for you. All right. Um, I let me flip this back to my dashboard now that we figured that out. Da da da. Okay, good. All right. Uh, Redis versus Mongo for this. It's up to you. It's it's up to you. Which one are you more comfortable with? Do you have do you have operations folks that are more comfortable with one or the other? Um. Does your team really like one of those? Do you have some sort of a support contract already in place with someone for one of those? It's up to you. Um, they both work great. They great opportunities for for um, horizontal scaling with those, right? You can just add more cash machines when you start feeling more pressure. When you have when you have that good problem of lots of data that you need to manage just start adding more machines and and on on cloud services like 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 google like amazon like azure that's a slider i need another cache machine okay here's two here's three and you don't even think about it five ten minutes later you've got more machines you've got more capacity and if you're spending another 15 20 bucks a month who cares because you've got more customers, you've got more users that you're supporting, and they should be paying you for that application access. It's somewhat confusing. What's a command and what's not a command? Um, let me. I will definitely answer that. Answer that. World wake, and we're going to see it as we start to implement Mediator here with this pull request that we got. Uh, aspiring DevOps guru, not sure how to articulate this. Could you use this architecture to also sort? sort of facilitate multiple environments where it's not possible to spin up a second database. Instead, have multiple environment-specific caches. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. I didn't put that song on repeat. <laughs> let's do this. Let's Let me fix this here real quick. We want to make sure this is on repeat. Play. Here we go. Loop. That's what I want. And we'll put the song back on again. There we go. So, um, absolutely, instead of spinning up a second database, you could spin up uh, virtual machines and have a, put a service in there that stores in memory. You could certainly do that. Um, could the reads also be implemented as commands? No. Those are, those are separate. Read, you're going to be saying things like, in core wiki <clears throat> your read is going to be get me the article with this with this slug with this identifier that's a read a command is update the article with this slug to have this new content so <clears throat> two different processes two different intentions you don't want to the the purpose of making them making them separate abstractions is that when you do get into later processing and you do start separating these things, you're going to end up putting putting these onto a service bus. 
you're going to put them into a queue. And you're going to separate that so that when that write needs to execute, you're going to send it off into a queue. Some command processor machine is going to receive it, process, do that interaction, and send you back a status command whether it succeeded or not. Isn't the S for separation? Yes. Right? Yep. So let's, let's, uh, let's put a thing here. Hey. Right. Uh, CQRS command query responsibility. And then I've heard either segregation. I like separation. There we go. Okay. So we're separating the commands and the queries. We're going to make two different machines at, at some point responsible for handling those. But for right now, we're going to see how to manage them separately. And WorldWake, World Wake, I think it'll become clearer to you what they are as we implement Mediator and you see different objects taking responsibility for those operations. Tagaron says, only big issue with split is how to sync if multiple clients can change the same data. That's a very good question. That's a good point. And it's the same it's the same issue you would have if you were using or you were running into um, if you had just that single database interaction. How do you handle it then? Well, you have transactions that you set up and you put maybe a a um, right you put a date stamp, right? You put some sort of a last changed uh, indicator on there. Uh, row version, right, was a technique that we use. And when you issue the command, you're saying update this thing as of this row version, and if the version doesn't match, you reject and say, sorry, it's already been updated. Let's refresh and see if you still want to apply this change. So, and then, right, you're gonna have that version come out and notify the cache, here's the order in which to apply these things, and if they come in the wrong version order, well, then you have a problem. Then you need to address those appropriately. Query being implemented using a command pattern. Ah, command pattern, a little bit different. Certainly can do it that way, yes. But a command pattern, yes. Uh, if you're using a single repository, it is simpler to sync. Perhaps. Perhaps. Um, I'm going to save this just so we have a copy of it. Uh -huh. C dev core wiki. Let's just save it as architecture. What do you mean it doesn't work? What do you mean it doesn't work? Go pound sand. Dev. Core wiki. Come on. Ha. Huh. All right. Um, wrong project. Wrong project. All right. Nope. Not that one. Let's go back into core wiki. And let me open up a... Uh, shell here and let's start taking a look at bringing in mediator and we're gonna dive in with both feet so monkey monkey th aka coding monkey it said there there you go um added mediator to the project only got the create article page working however it'll give you an idea of the layout and steps to expand the project added new core wiki application which holds the commands and queries. Now, I think we can use that, okay. Um, it should build and run, works on my machine, but we had a fail here. Um, there was a little bit of a merge issue. Found a bug in the Xbox Twitch client. It shows all mugs in black. Ooh. Good catch, Tagaron. The command in the diagram is specific to CQRS. Yes, it's a command object, um, not the command pattern. Um, I think of them as the same, just one can change data and one can't. You want to process them on different processors. 
That way you can scale differently. Yes. Yes. All right. So let's see. Let's see what what um, what Code Monkey did here. So created a create new article command that takes in the article create DTO. Um. Okay. And then has the new article here. Hmm. My concern here is article DTO is what we're using to paint the content on the page. And I would rather receive into the command the, the properties that I need in order to create the article and, and not have, have it basically wrapping some other object. So I, this isn't quite the structure that I would go with um, this also means that I would need to move my DTO object from my web project out to somewhere that this application project can see it. So I'm not, I'm not thrilled with this content. Let's continue. Um, so application articles, commands, create new article command handler. So create new article command handler. So this is going back to, I, I closed PowerPoint. PowerPoint. I'm going to refer back to this diagram because I think it'll be easier to show what's going on between these two. Um, so let's move you over here, this over here. I don't need to see this. All right. So this create new article command handler, right? So this was a command. And its intention is we're going to create a new article. Um, and I'm not sure if it should be a request. Hmm. Okay. The command is going to come in here because it's doing a create. And the handler that's going to actually process that command is this object. Article equals new article. And then it's going to... Say article repository, create article in history. This is what we're doing right now in the middle of our page, right? This isn't, right? So we're moving this out somewhere else that can process that for us. Articles links, it's going to get the articles to create and return those. Now, returning that collection of article links doesn't actually isn't something that I care about on the page. I'd rather spin up another command that says, okay, here's all my links. Go create pages from these. Do people use private setters a lot over the read-only option? I don't know. That's a good question. That's a really good question about how folks use C Sharp. Um... The read-only feature of uh, C Sharp 6, right? So you see here, these private read-only fields. These fields can only be assigned to during a constructor. So when this, when this is being created, you need to create a... This is the only time that you can assign to that read-only field. Afterwards, you can't change that object. You can't set it to null or put a new instance into that. It's it's locked down. Um, I'm not sure. That's a good question, Moss. Um, and then, okay, there's an exception here that we can throw if there's a problem. Okay. And then here we move the article DTO, it looks like, to application articles, models, article DTO. Yeah, I'm not thrilled with that. Because you've added an object that had, does nothing but wrap this object. That feels a little roundabout here. Hey there, Ashley. So I'm I'm not I'm not thrilled with that approach. Uh, create article view model, and yeah, it's an object that wraps the one object. Create new article query. Okay, so I request 
create article view model. Okay. Create new article query for a slug return. And it's just storing this, right? So here's, here's a great example of a query. Going back to, I think Worldwake was asking, what's the difference between a command and a query? Here's a query where previously in our repository, we would say, right, let me go back over to Visual Studio. Um, no. Right, uh, oh, let me turn on Karnak. Right, I would say um, in my article... SQLite repository, right? Get article by slug. See this right here? We're passing in just the slug. What's the title of the article that we're going to search for? And we would go find it and return that one article as a domain object. This is that query. Here's the slug I want to go find, go get it, and it's going to return a create article view model. So, Here's where it's doing a request and it's returning this object. A command should not return an object. A command should fire and return a status. Was it successful or not? Get article by slug with comments. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Do we have one of those? I don't see one. But that's probably an even better way to do it. Was it including it? Get article by slug. Yeah, with comments. Yeah, I can buy that. Sure. Um, missed a bit. Was out for a, for a 30th. For a 30th. Oh. Might have to watch double speed. <laughs> no, no. We, we went over and we did a little bit of... Uh, architecture descript description code air thanks so much for the host uh for the eight folks that are over there on code air welcome thanks for joining me over here this is uh this is my live stream i like to call fritz and friends we're we're writing some code together we're talking about the cqrs pattern command query responsibility separation and we're we're going to take our website that has a repository pattern all of our interactions with the database goes through a repository class. And we're going to start to separate out that interaction with the repository so that we have commands to do all of our updates and, and writes, and we have queries to do all of our reads. I hate the iOS keyboard. <laughs> Segregation, not separation. I, I, I know that's what they say it is, uh, Shikata. Um... They really mean the same thing here. Um, but I don't... I think separation is a little bit easier for, for folks who are not uh, English-first speakers to understand. I know it's supposed to be segregation, but I want to use the term separation so that some of our some of our friends who, who don't speak English first can understand a little bit. It is... It, and yes, Maz, that, that's... That's another one. Segregation carries some some baggage for folks in some countries. There's there's a little bit there that I, I folks in folks in Africa have a little bit of, have have a challenge with that word. So I think separation still properly declares the intent of the architecture. Um, it's usually mentioned as a code organization pattern. Fair enough. Fair enough. I I want to make sure that. That we use, that we we clearly describe the intent without uh, without offending anybody, without and and using a, a proper term. The world had too much baggage. It does, yeah. Oh, in Bosnia, there's another one. Yes. So, um, I so let me back up just a little bit. Uh, to, to, to public property with an underscore. I don't like that. We'll, we'll figure that out. We'll f clean that up. Uh, <laughs> I've only seen it as separation. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Moving along a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm I'm already seeing a couple of issues here. Yeah, this public property with a underscore. I'm I'm not thrilled with. So I see a couple of challenges here that that make me say. I don't want to accept the pull request. I appreciate 
where this is trying to work, but it's not quite... It, it's not quite where I need it. Let's separate the heck out of those concerns. <laughs> Uh, there's a pending pull request with Entity Framework might want to do first, says Comps for Food. Hey, Code Hair, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us and the host. Um, you say there's another pull request with Entity Framework. Let's uh, let me take a quick look there. If there's something that we do need to address first. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Clean up namespace and references to domain objects. This one from Y2K for life. Um, holy cannoli, 67 files changed. But only 92 lines. And it's just a bunch of namespace changes. And you know what? All checks passed. So I'm going to take that. This is in the project new data. Um... Thank you for cleaning this up after the stream on Thursday. Much appreciated. All right. Um, and I, I scrolled up real quick. They're merging into um, Y2K for Life is merging into the Project New Data branch. This is where we're working for all of our architecture changes. So it's in one place and we don't break any place else that folks may be working on some user interface concerns. So uh, I really appreciate the the commit here from Y2K for Life. And if you look up top on the scoreboard, all the way at the top of the screen there, um, it should, I'm going to force an update there, and uh, we should see Y2K for Life on this week's uh, contributors to the project. Thanks so much for that. Uh, and we're going to continue looking here into this change. Um, let me make sure I have. Um, that's fine. I'm going to pull in those changes now. Cool. All right. Going back here to the code. So we're, we're seeing this separation. This introduction of the application project is nice. Um, but I'm... Okay, a validation object, fine. Architecture or article helpers. Um, so we've moved this. Okay. Configure pipeline logger. Mm, okay. So this is logging what's going on inside the pipeline. String helpers got moved. I'm not thrilled with that either because I think that's a concern. Of the, well, it's a concern of the domain. And I would almost rather have it in my core so that we can apply it no matter what user interface we put on the front. Uh, let me take a look at the chat room real quick here. I've had some experience with CQRS in a previous workplace and really, en and really enjoyed how easy it is to set up tests when using it. Tom Mutton, thank you Tom for joining us, continues. Uh, we used ADODB connections. Now for those of you that aren't familiar, ADO was um, active data objects. Um, back in the old comm days, before .NET, ADO was uh, the, the uh, prevalent technology we used for accessing the database. The stuff that you see in the system.data namespace in .NET inherits and is the descendant of that ADO technology. And you'll hear people refer to it as ADO as well. But let me continue with what Tom's saying here. Was unsure how this architecture could work with Entity Framework, so it's good to see someone using Entity Framework with this. I might give Mediator a try. Oh, well, thanks for joining us, Tom. And yeah, I think, I think this is gonna be interesting to see how it works. Just squash and merge code from a random person on the internet. No, no, no. Is the master for this project being CD'd somewhere? It is not yet. And I need to do that. Um, World Wake, uh, yeah, I'm going to deny that comment, World Wake. Uh, just I want to wanna make sure that we keep profanity out of the chat room. But uh, I'm glad that you got the, <laughs> got the message still out there. Um... And I'm going to allow shikadas there. 
Um, let's see. I'm going to continue reading here. But we do, Denerd, we do need to start deploying this so we have a, a reference application. I was thinking the same. So easy to slip in something malicious when the changes to 67 files aren't all going to be read. Um, you're welcome to look at it. I don't have concerns. Um, <laughs> right, let me jump out here. Scroll back down. Right, so the, that code that we brought in was in Project New Data. And if we look at that commit, right, I mean, it's changing the word entity framework everywhere, right? Here in the designer, entity framework, entity framework. Entity framework, entity framework. So um, it's in one commit now, pretty easy to see exactly where these changes are. And since it was almost the exact same number of lines that were changed as were removed, there doesn't appear to be any injected code coming in here. How the heck did I get jumped off? Oh, uh, this. There we go. So, um, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with this change. I mean, look at them all. They're... It's literally just entity framework naming. So, eh, moving that around, big deal. Right? So. Right, core wiki data security goes away. That's fine. So, pretty good. It is a good practice. Um, yeah. We're pretty good there. Comps for food has multiple personalities. That's interesting. All right. Um, maybe someone can advise book article about choosing the right application architecture for different scenarios. Says, asks Bandurge. Um, it's something that you you really need to learn some. Get I, I got experience around it. That's how I I figured it out. Building small applications, big applications. Um, I don't. Yeah, it's, it's hard to look into that. High load and all sorts of banking. Yep, there's another good one. Uh, so good practice. That is a really cool trick. Look at lines added versus removed. I've been doing PRs on our code health team and have a, analyzed a ton of very large changes. Um, not very familiar with that domain, but a very general book is Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture. Yeah, so write the Gang of Four book which I believe is on the shelf there behind me, on the other side of my green screen. But the Gang of Four book is the one that I absolutely recommend. The Fowler book is very good as well. I have the Enterprise uh, Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture as well. Very good books from Martin Fowler. Um, totally making what the use of Azure Cognitive Emotion API and blank give me some groundwork to work on. Um, yeah, Janescu, we've used cognitive services here on, on the stream, um, and the, the chat bot that's monitoring the chat room, um, does a nice job looking at images that folks share in the chat room. So, um, so here's string helpers, this was moved, application, so the application project only includes mediator and refers to the data project and th this changed this doesn't exist anymore because we renamed it to entity framework um, okay core wiki core core wiki data with the tiered compilation stuff that came from Shane the solution introducing the application project configure mediator so add mediator, add the pipeline, request preprocessor behavior, add mediator, and then that one command that was introduced, create new article. Mm, you shouldn't have to do that. 
Oh, it's probably because it's outside the project. Okay. Um, create. Now, the create page has mediator on it. Now, here's where... This is where I actually am curious to see how this is being implemented here from CodeMonkey. Um, I love Vulcan. All right. Welcome. I appreciate you joining us here. Um... So when you're using mediator on the page, this is where you're actually gonna do the interactions back and forth. So it's receiving iMediator, and for some reason, it's he's still receiving a repository and it's not receiving the clock anymore. Hmm. Um, okay, mediator equals mediator. So on a get, it's saying mediator send. Here's my new article query. And what comes out of it is going to be that new article to create to be allow you to create like a this feels weird this feels weird on a create page i shouldn't hmm. this i'm not quite sure about this Right, so if the if the article already exists, reroute to the edit page. That makes sense to me. Um, and Worldwake says I love lamp. Really? Okay. That's hey, if that works for you, fantastic. But lamp being the lamp stack, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and po and PHP. Um, it's a nice stack. A lot of folks have moved over to JavaScript, to Node, to Mongo, and working in, in that space. So folks that use MySQL and PHP, um, it's not too bad. That was an Anchorman reference. What was an Anchorman reference? No, it wasn't. Gotta love that PHP now runs faster on .NET. Yes, Moz. Yes, with Peach Pie. And I wanna, the the Peach Pie folks reached out to me, and I want to spend a, I want to spend a a stream one day, converting my blog, which is running on WordPress, to running on WordPress on top of Peach Pie. Now I think that'll be fun. Um, so here's the actual property being received, the DTO. And instead of setting everything here to be saved into the database and actually calling create the article in history um, it actually says mediator go create this article here's the new article command now the problem that that I have with the create new article command is you're literally just wrapping that DTO which I think is a bad practice because your command now isn't adding significant value. And you have to maintain that reference to that DTO across lots of different lots of different projects. And I want that to just be a website concern. Um, and then the article links are returned from that and then we're gonna decide whether to redirect to page. It, and it right this is literally a th this is a status code right we create the fact that article links came back right that that some number of links came back means i need to go do this create article from link the fact that there's that there the contents of it doesn't matter the presence of it is what matters. So I think we're doing a little bit much here. PHP runs faster on a lot of things, but selling fast PHP is their business model. It is. Using expressionless face, uh, give sum above 0005. Zero, 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 okay. Uh, that's not some dig or something. That's where Zend makes money. It is. It is. Um, doo, 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 doo. Yep, the Emotion API. All right, so I, I think we're, I, I think we aren't quite fleshed all the way out here. I think there's more to be derived from what's going on in the command execution here. 
Um, and then services ad mediator in the startup. Okay. Um, I'm not sure whether to take this and start brutally refactoring. I don't know. Or if I just say, you know what? I appreciate it. Let's let's do some refactoring. So the the new article DTO, right? That was where's I wish I could just see the list of files that were changed. Right? I mean, okay, it's right there. But this wasn't moved from anywhere. This is the application article DTO. So now I've got two objects called DTO, and that feels weird. And I've got this create article view model coming back. Not sure I like that. I know Ace Flames here. It's confusing. Um, and it's something that I want to make sure that we, we disamb dis disambiguate. Easy for me to say. Um, okay, this needs to be merged anyway. Because there's there's a conflict. So we need a conflict resolution here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this. And I'm not going to merge it right away. But I'm going to start going through and putting these pieces together. Would this look simpler if AutoMapper were here first? Maybe not simpler, but it would definitely, uh, I think it would definitely be, um, maybe it would be simpler, okay. I can buy that. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have our one conflict in core wiki CS proj. Uh, no, I'm sorry, in the create. All right. I'm going to reload these. Um, don't need that. Don't need that. I'm good on that. Good on that. And this. All right, let's open Solution Explorer and let's start taking a look here. So there's CoreWiki. I've got a couple of triangles here. Well, that doesn't make me happy. Is it building? It's not going to build because that create page. Yeah. All right, CoreWiki data does not exist inside of CoreWiki, CoreWiki application, and CoreWiki test. So we need to fix those references. Um, you know what? I'm an elite developer. I'm going to edit my CS project file directly. Because because I'm elite. Um, all right. Core wiki data. Entity framework. Where did... Where is it referencing... The core wiki data project. There's where it is. I think that's fine. Let's look at that error list. Come here, I'm trying to. There you go. Core wiki application. Yeah, this one makes sense that it's not pointing to the right project. And I will edit this one. Entity framework. That should clean that one up. Core wiki test. Core wiki core, core wiki notifications, core wiki CS proj. Where's it referencing the data project? Try that again.
I need a do not try this at home overlay. Ooh, I like that. I am going to, yes, I like that. Try this at home overlay. That's right, kids, don't try this at home. You don't need to unload core projects first. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> uh, didn't need to unload it. That's correct, Denerd. Um, the core projects do not need to be unloaded. Uh, core wiki application could not be loaded. Now it's saying core wiki application is still looking for core wiki dot data. Oh, oh, oh. You know what? Yeah. That should actually be core.interfaces. Entity framework. Well, actually. And now this should be article. Mm, no. This should be core wiki core. I don't think it was models, it's domain. Better. Article helpers get articles to create. I don't like that. Article repository. Okay. Article. I'm not liking what I see here. Um... Ugh. Ugh. Um, sad that it's core specifically. Well, Denerd, actually. Um, that is a feature that they are bringing to .NET Framework 4.8. And the they call it the SDK um, uh, project model. So when you look at this, see how it says project SDK equals... They've separated out a lot of that, that goo that was common to all of our project files, made it a little bit easier to reference and bring in just the things you need so that your project file is a lot simpler. Um, so this feature is going to become the, if I remember the roadmap properly, is going to become the default for .NET Framework 4.8 projects. And you, uh, Visual Studio... 2017 and the upcoming Visual Studio 2019 will both support this. Um, <laughs> dabbing hat is a new Fritz hat. <laughs> uh, 1337 coder mode enabled. Yes, leet mode coder mode enabled. Each 1337 coder instance should add 10 to the Rainbow Beard Challenge. Oh! So the Rainbow Beard Challenge, there it is, right there. If we get to 5,000 followers by October 20, we're going to uh, change this soup catcher here so it's a little rainbow flavored, a little rainbow colored. Um, and I think uh, I, th I think Quantum Brat is now joining us. Uh, good morning, Quantum Brat. Thank you for following. I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Love that I call it a soup catcher. That's, yeah. It's actually more like chili. I like getting chilly in there. Save that for later. Um, so, got my hair cut the other day, right? And, of course, if there's anybody to talk to about dyeing hair, it's the folks at the hair salon. It's the folks at your stylist, your barber, those folks. And uh, I went to the, the local salon because I need to look good. And uh, I asked the girl there who was cutting my hair, the, the young lady, and I, I said, you know, I'm... I'm doing this thing where I'm, I may be dyeing my beard in the future. She said, oh, just get some Just for Men. It'll get that gray right out. Do it! You're kidding me, right? I said, no, no, no. I'm doing a thing where I want to make it rainbow colored. I want to put, like, you know, red, orange, yellow, blue, and green. No, really. Really. I'm, I'm going to put rainbow colors in my beard. She said, okay. Don't do that with normal hair dye, because um, it it's it's not the same. It it's um, 
they, they tell you not to put that on facial hair. Okay. So what they recommended is um, washing it out real good and then using an oil-based chalk. It'll be temporary, but um, I'll be able to get those bright colors without having to bleach it first because it's the bleaching first that they really don't want you to do on your face. Shut up, President. Not sure. What are you doing? <laughs> Shave and tattoo a rainbow beard. Uh, no, no, no. Um, I think that's why they're waiting for VS 2019. Uh, no. Uh, so, so that's what I'm looking at. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be trimming my beard at all. I'm going to let it grow as far as we can into October. We'll see how far, how far it grows. I'm going to look like, I'm going to look like ZZ Top here at some point. Um, irony. ZZ Top is known for their giant beards, and the one guy in the band who doesn't have the giant beard, his name, Frank Beard. Who knew? Anyways, um, you could shave for the next goal, and ta-da, you have rainbow beard again. Yeah, we could do that. Tie dye it? Oh, McNurious. Oh, no. So tell your friends, tell your families, tell your pets, go create a Twitch account. Join us on Twitch. And uh, sign up, get some follows here. We're getting close to 3,200. I don't think that's on pace for the 5,000. Um, can't imagine what Mrs. Fritz thinks of all of this. So, talking to talking to the wife, talking to the commander, talking to um, it's funny. Uh, I was I was talking talking to the wife i was showing her my friend uh, ellie face her channel she does this show cooking with heat over there and at some point uh the missus and i are going to join um ellie and uh and brent um and we're gonna do it we're gonna join them for a cooking show one monday but um they kept referring to her as mrs c sharp so she created a twitch account mrs c sharp <laughs> It's like, all right, hey, whatever. You can always change your name here on Twitch. But uh, it'll be fun. Uh, she thinks it's great. But does she follow me? I was like the third person she followed on Twitch. She followed them first. Feels bad. I know she's so sharp. <laughs> I don't know about that. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. What do we... What did we break here? The typer namespace article could not be found in article helpers. Yeah, we're going to need to fix this. I'm not thrilled with this article helpers. Whenever I see a class named something helpers, that's a code smell to me. That's that Something isn't quite right there. I'm not quite sure about that. So, my hat's kind of crooked here. Look at... Well, Alright, try and get that... There we go. All right, so yeah, I got the Mustang hat on today. I think that looks kind of cool. Always a fan of Mustangs. And that uh, that movie, Gone in sixty seconds, where he's he's scrambling to to steal the the Shelby Mustang at the end. Beautiful car, beautiful car. Um, it's a shame it got trashed as much as it did. I have a Twitter C Sharp Fritz view now because of the other project we're working on. Lots of updates. Oh, awesome. All right. I will have to take a look at that. Uh, get the better Twitch TV extension for new emotes. We need Pepe's. <laughs> Looks like Fritz is dabbing. No, no, no. Um, so, so you see the number over here, that 83? If, if that averages... Over 75, you can qualify for partnership. And at partnership, you can put in a whole bunch of additional emotes. Um, and the transcoding, I know some folks in Europe, some folks in South America, some folks in Australia that are watching, sometimes have a problem with the resolution that I'm at. And uh, I want to make sure that I broadcast that I broadcast and record it at high def. But it doesn't always transcode. It doesn't always bring it down to a lower resolution to help those folks that might have lower bandwidth, might have challenge getting to the uh, the local Twitch connection. Um, 
But when you're a partner, though, you get priority and you always get transcoded. So we'll see. And we just need to make sure that that number stays above 75. And we almost hit 100 the other day. Um, we got real close to, to 100. We got up to like 96 or 97 the other day. But we didn't flip it to 100 just yet. So. Almost there. Almost there. All right. So looking at the, these this article helpers class, like I said, uh, that's a code smell. If it's a helper, why isn't that on some other object that it more strongly belongs with, right? If it's an article helper, well, why isn't it just on that article object as a method, right? These things and... and uh, right, these were helper objects that were out on out in our web project. Clark IO is now hosting. Thanks so much, Brian, for the host. I appreciate that. Uh, if you're if you're a big fan of Visual Studio Code, if you really enjoy writing, uh, working with Node.js, Brian writes a lot of great code with that. He shows he has a, a it's almost like a monthly video he does with all the great new features in Visual Studio Code. Check him out. Uh, head over there to Clark IO on Twitch. Give him a follow. Um, and of course, you can always just stay tuned to the Visual Studio channel. And when Brian goes live and he's programming, he'll be live on the Visual Studio channel. We're trying to make that Visual Studio channel kind of a center place that you can stay tuned to and pick up and watch all the great developer content here on Twitch that has that either uses Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio for Mac, um, a little bit of Azure in there. So all kinds of great stuff. If I start to follow all those channels, I will have no time to code. That's okay, because a lot of us, we have uh, the video on demand available as well. So throw a follow, and if there's a good topic that you want to tune in for, tune in. If it's, if it's not something you might be interested in now, eh, check out the video later, and you can come back to it. I don't care about the, the memers in chat. Oh, come on. <laughs> How about Visual Studio App Center? Sure, absolutely. Blend for Visual Studio? Why not? Why not? Um, okay, so this article helpers class, it started as a, as a helper class that we just needed someplace to put some text helpers in the web project. And what it's doing now... Uh, I, I think it's it's time it's time to retire. It's time to move this stuff somewhere else because um, I'm not going to look at this get articles to create. Let me come back to that one. But the this is really what articles do we need to create based on the content that was right that was um, submitted. This doesn't need to act on the database. This needs to act on the domain object so that when content is created, right, is put into our article domain object, we somewhere receive out of it, you know, here's the articles that are referenced. Now, one of the things this does do in here, because it takes in that article repository, is it actually goes and looks up, is that topic available? And if it if it isn't available, I'm sorry, if, um, is it or does it already exist? And if it doesn't exist, well, then it returns it as a, as part of that list. Uh, yes, Tom, that's exactly what I was about to say. Good minds think alike. Look at that. Absolutely. Um, it's, it does feel like it's in the wrong place. I don't want to be doing a database interaction when I'm analyzing the text of the text of this uh, of this article. So I think we want to move that. Um, I think everything is in entity framework is in a good place, but it's what's going on here in this application that we need to we need to do a little bit of work with these things that are common. Right, and I'm seeing URL helpers, string helpers, article helpers. These things, I think we want to start moving into those domain objects to make them richer because those are the objects that are being passed around, right? That's what I want to pass around. 
and be able to take action on it in those different places. Yeah, President, not sure, and standby reloading are, are agreeing with my direction on this. Good. Okay. Moving on. So, these references to the data namespace, right, this is trying to get to the, <clears throat> the interfaces. So, I'm going to put core on that so I can clear that out. And that, that helps this query handler. Now, the query handler <clears throat> and the create new article query, I'm going to end up refactoring that a little bit. But I want to get this, I want to get this compiling and I want to move these things to start. Configure pipeline logger. I'm I'm okay with this. It's taking our logger object, right? Our I logger object that's common and abstracted already in ASP.NET Core, and it's it's putting it in here so that it's right. We can process and we can see what's being logged, what's being handled by Mediator. That's good. That's okay. I'm I'm pretty confident and happy with this. But let's let's take these article helpers. Art. Let's take these article helpers. Ah, there we go. And let's start binding these, not binding, but putting them into our article object so that we can start working with that. The articles to create, I think, is an artifact. This is something that happens during the edit or creation process. That, that happens in a command handler and decides whether or not to fire off another command. Um, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> and then inside of our create page, let me go back to that create page. Do, 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 create page, it's over here. Right? Uh, uh -oh. We got this weird merge issue. Um, take everything, we'll sort it out later, because it'll tell me, oh, you've got duplicates. Yeah, see? You've already done this. I don't know what that thing is. And even then, you've duplicated this. Blah, 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 I don't care. All right, moving on. Right, so where I have a challenge in here, right? Look, article create DTO, it's ambiguous because we have the same object in both places. Now he's suggesting this should be the application DTO. Well really, I'd like the database object to bring this back. Ace Flames here, you don't like article repository. Why not? Oh, you don't like article repository being passed in here. Yes, I agree. If as we, as we move more towards CQRS, command query responsibility, let me go back to our architecture diagram. We're not making a request, right? Where's my, right? We are not doing this, right? Uh, can I change the color of that? There's gotta be a color. Color? I'd like a color, please. Right, and uh, come on, give me some options. What can I do with this thing? Right, let's make it, let's make it big and, and red, and I wanna make it like dashed. Can I make it dashed? I'd like it dashed. Dashed, please. Um, and I'd like it red. Red. Red, it's a thing. Maybe you've heard of it. Um, that is wrong, right? In CQRS, that's bad. The, the Simeon, Lucio Ball, somebody's been playing some Overwatch. Once, once, makes me want to shove my face into my keyboard. I'm sorry to hear that. Lucio Ball is, is like Rocket League, right? That's that, that's that uh, soccer game that you play driving cars. Lucio Ball is in Overwatch, the Overwatch game. And uh, it's, it's, everybody plays as this character, Lucio. And they kick a soccer ball around a little uh, soccer arena. First person, point of view style. It's kind of fun. But uh, sorry to hear that, the Simeon. But this is what we don't want to do. And... And to Ace Flameseer's point, and, and it's a very good point, this is a smell that this is being passed in here now. It shouldn't be. We should be creating our query and saying, go get this. Or creating our command that says, go create this. 
and it goes and and does that for me and all the interaction with the database takes place inside that query handler or that command handler and that's not the case here so we're gonna we're gonna refactor mercilessly here um, I need to bring up the test explorer here and the test explorer is actually looking pretty clean I'm gonna make sure I turn on live unit testing here so that I can see and be sure that uh, that I'm not significantly breaking things <laughs> um, fetch query fetch who's a good query <laughs> yes um, have you played I want to be the Boshi not familiar with that all right so moving along here we've got a, a couple of wonky things um, but this is returning those article links I when it returns the article links it redirects to create article from link and it's passing in it's passing into it the ID of the page and then when it gets to that page it goes and figures out which articles are we creating? So I'm doing that calculation twice. Feels bad, man. I've had problems around live unit testing, I think because I have direct project references in my solution. No, no, you should be fine. It should be fine, it should do those, no problem. Um, I'm actually going to, let's do this. I'm, I'm gonna get a little crazy here. I'm gonna take Test Explorer and I'm gonna put it on the lower half here, which will put it a little bit behind my head, but that's okay. I just wanna see that it's all green, okay? And then I'll still be able to navigate the Solution Explorer while having Test Explorer available. Um, so I still have a bunch of these errors, so my tests aren't really running yet. Um, so I've got, a, I've got a couple of smells here, code smells that I want to work out and I think we've resolved this collision issue in the create page. But we're we're still going to make this a little bit more uh, a little bit a little bit more um, interesting. Um, and we want to get rid of a lot of this stuff that's going on here. Yeah. Okay. So let's take. Let's take a, a look at this. Um, the on get, right? It's going and saying, go fetch a new article. That feels silly to me. That feels like, that feels like I'm going and, um, really, I'm, I'm hitting the, the mediator to, to load this, Right, that feels weird. I don't think I need all of this. I think I can just return a new article. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say article create DTO equals new article create DTO. I shouldn't have to create, shouldn't have, shouldn't have, half is the wrong word. I shouldn't need to create that. And I don't need to do queries here. So let's get rid of that. Um, now this should be, this should be article equals new models. Good, okay. This should be models article create DTO, good. Um, do, 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 do. cleaning, cleaning by fire, rebuilding. Hmm. All right. So I'm just fetching this. Yeah, I don't have. I'm not doing anything asynchronously here. I can just return itask result, and even change this to on get. All right. Here we go. So that looks pretty good. And just to make sure that I haven't 
going a little crazy. If I look at the page, there's nothing that it's really loading in here. So I'm I'm still pretty comfortable comfortable. Right? ASP4, the article topic, that's fine. Article topic, article content. These are empty. That's okay. So the one thing the mm, the one thing was if that slug right if we're coming from create right from the create article from link right um it creates where'd it go it creates a list of articles to go and create Slash wiki slash blah 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 blah. Mm. So if it's if it is provided, I should probably provide it. Continue to provide it. I didn't want to do that. Here we go. Um, content or topic? Well, topic I can use, and that's I'm going to be able to use. Here we go. Article helpers dot. No. Um. Isn't it like string helpers dot to title case and then the slug. All right, let me go over there. Um, no, there was like a from slug to title. That's not exactly what I want. Because we had we did have these URL helper things in here. Uh, helpers. Right, because I had slug to topic and then I had like Yeah, slug to topic, that's what I want. Where? Um so that's under URL helpers. Which, once again, mm, I shouldn't really need this. Slug to topic, and then slug. Uh, don't need that one there. Good. Okay. Now, for the actual save, URL friendly article topic. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay. Creating page with slug. Is topic available? Title already exists. That's fine. And then this is where it starts to get a little nutty down here. Um, before I dig in, let me check out the chat room. Ain't not needin' have to... Uh, stop it, McNerdius. Live Genius Testing wants to copy all these files into a spot, and it copies all of them except this PDB file, which it copies about. Uh, it fusses about. Hmm. Uh, why didn't you need the async? Oh, because um, all I'm doing is returning an object. I'm not actually waiting. I'm not reaching out to the database for anything. So I can I can remove the async, make it a little bit simpler for it to work with. Reverence, one, two, three, eight, nine. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. Um, should the on get accept a slug object that has a two topic? A slug object that has a two topic. Um, I think you're on to something there, Ashley. What if we put the two topic method on the on the article create DTO? Right? Um, and that should, right, that moves it someplace that brings it closer to where it's actually intended to be used. Uh, he has already worked on making domain models less anemic, or are they still just public setters? They they are just public setters right now, but but we're figuring out those things to put into the domain models reverence. So you're you've caught us just as we're doing that, and we're finding some of these helper methods, like this one, slug to topic, that it feels like, you know what, this is something that we should put over there. Um, is Mediator just for CQRS, or does it have built-in event dispatch for raising events across the application? 
Um, I don't know. I don't know that much about Mediator. That's part of what we're learning. So, I'm hoping someone can help me out. I've got live credentials in a public GitHub repo. Uh -oh. I'm not even sure the user still uses GitHub going by the commit graph. How should I handle this? Um, run. Run away. Very, very quickly. Do not pass go. Leave. Um, I would send a message to the... I would send a message to the uh, owner of the project. Um, IT Goran says, did you plan to introduce CSLA after talking with Rocky Latka and make the domain object smart? That's a great idea. That's a really good idea. My gosh. I, I hadn't thought about that, uh, IT Goran. Um, change the credentials. Nice. Um, send a pull request to, and send a pull request that says you need to change this if you get into event sourcing you can, you can remove all properties on your domain so they only contain methods and behaviors uh, yes it might be overkill in this project though you're right and CQRS in this project is a bit of overkill however this is very much a learning project. Um, if we wanted to be productive, if we wanted to get this thing delivered and shipped, and if we were if we were a startup, we would have been done this months ago. We would have focused. We would have been spending twelve hour days doing nothing but core wiki, and we would have shipped this. But the the goal of this project, in addition to putting together a nice content management system, is to work together and learn about some of these patterns, some of these practices, some of the features of C-sharp, ASP.NET Core, and other technologies that we bring in to enhance the entire experience. So while event sourcing and a, a rich domain object like that, um, is, as Beck Bristow is, is describing, while that might be a little much for what we're intending here, to learn about it, might be worthwhile taking a step into there. Cool. Oh, I'm glad you agree with me. Yep. So, all right. Moving along. So this slug to topic, I would either put inside of my article domain object or I would hang off of article create DTO. Um, <laughs> let's do that. That feels weird, though, adding a method like that onto the DTO. Cynical Joker TVQ, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, and I hope you're not too cynical in our chat room. We're, we're kind of friendly, a friendly bunch here. DTOs are meant to be a bit anemic. Yes, they are. You're right, they are. Which makes this feel a little weird to put over there. Oh my gosh, reverence. Thank, thank you so much for using your Twitch Prime subscription here. Um, I will match that, and we'll make a donation to to our friends at Girl Develop It. I, I never require anybody to make a subscription here. Um, but I very much appreciate that, and, and I will give you access to, to the C-Sharp bot emote. Um, but I want to show my appreciation for you and make a, a contribution to our friends at Girl Develop It so that women and underserved minorities, other folks that want to learn how to write code just like we are here, can have a great experience learning that. And they've got, uh, they've got chapters in cities and states and areas all over the world. Um, and we're going to make a big donation to Girl Develop It here at the end of the month. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty special. So thank you so much for that contribution. And uh, any any cheers, any subscriptions, we'll, we will make that donation. Um, I very much appreciate supporting them. Uh, you really like what we're doing here? Oh, cool. As someone who works in the industry and lacks someone to be able to collaborate with, this is great. Oh, thank you so much, Reverence. Um, I've heard some folks like to leave, leave the channel up in the background and kind of peek over when something interesting is happening or something they can contribute to. 
Um, I very much appreciate all of our folks in the chat room, and you'll hear me refer to the chat room as our, our pair programmers. Folks that, that I want to make sure uh, we recognize and show that you've done a great job contributing, and that's the scoreboard up top as well. Um, so, great contributions from folks that, that I want to celebrate. This isn't all about me here. This is about our community and growing. So, um, who was it who said, making an extent, Beck Bristow, that's a good idea. Making an extension method. So what if we did this? Thinking out loud, right? What if we did this? Let's add another model beside our article create DTO. Um, and let's, let's create public abstract class. I, I, I've got a, I think... I think Beck, I think Beck Bristow, I think we, we've got something pretty cool here. Let's call this uh, base article DTO. Okay. And and let's not put anything in it. Right? This is going to be weird. I'm going to put it in its own file. Eh. Um, but I will do this. Base article DTO. So I haven't actually enhanced or done anything to it. And I can do the same thing with article edit DTO, base article DTO. Now, haha, now let's take article helpers. No, um, that was on URL helpers. Yeah. Here we go. And then let's take slug to topic and say uh, this dot base article DTO. Why doesn't it like it? What? Oh, duh. There we go. What do you think? Um. Too bad you can't colon where with extension methods. Yeah. Um, uh, what do we got here? I'm keeping this on my second monitor while I work on something else. I do that with with uh, Noopcat stream on Sunday mornings. I keep I keep her on one screen so I can listen in to some of the cool stuff she's working in, and uh, I'll be writing code on another screen. Aren't you now assuming that this is the only place where it's going to be called from? It is right now. And it's really a website concern. Because the slug is something... Mm. You're right. Enable debug symbol and XML documentation. Hey, congratulations, President Not Sure. Oh my gosh. That's great to hear that you got it working. Good for you. Um, ooh, you're right, Ashley. Why not create a slug domain object? I don't... So, Moz, that, that was where I started thinking, but the slug is really an object. It's, it's a property of the article. Which leads me to think that this should be on the article domain object. Same thing with URL friendly. Let's do that instead. Let's get rid of this. While that was a neat trick, don't need it. Um, and it, I also put it over here. And then I can get rid of this. And then if I take, where was it? The URL helpers. Da, da, da. Spell URL helpers, right? There we go. If I take these and I hang them on my article domain object, because really, all this is doing is text manipulation, you know? Space nail slug DTO. Now cut that out. Uh, it almost gamifies testing for me. It does. Uh, article slug. Okay, that's a... 
Wow. Oh, look at this. Response code does not indicate success coming back from the cognitive services on that one. Interesting. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to take these URL helpers, and they were, they're were they also being used down here. And I'm going to move these on to, right, because they're the ones that I'm concerned about right now are these right here. So I'm going to get rid of that because and I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to take this whole shebang and go over to the article domain object spell article Jeff you can't type today Jeff all right so now so now to references point I'm going to start making I'm going to start making this a little bit uh where'd it go I was just in the art article. I'm going to start adding features here. So this is less anemic, right? It, it starts to have a little bit of, a little bit of uh, capabilities in here. So we've got the homepage slug. And we're going to need to bring in regular expressions here. Now we've got two title case which is in our string, our string helpers location. And we're gonna wanna move that around. You could put the code in the get set of topic and slug, or at least call the code from there. That's, that's even better. Um, and I think <clears throat> we have these URL helper tests. I think we're going to end up migrating those so they become article domain tests, which I think is a very good thing. Um, remove diacritics. That's fine. <clears throat> um, okay, URL friendly. Okay. So two title case was coming out of string helpers. Da -da 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 -da. Two title case. New culture info, text info to title case. And did we need is, yeah, remove hyphens is good. Why is remove hyphens good? Where's it seeing remove hyphens? Or is it, it just hasn't blown up yet is what's going on there. Um, okay. Let me take all of this. And for right now, come on now. There it is. Um, <laughs> so this is an extension method on string. For our purposes, I'm going to get rid of... Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. Change this around slightly. Rats. Missed it. Missed it by that much. Okay, now remove hyphens doesn't work. Right, I'm going to do the same deal here. Okay, just because I don't have an extension method to put this on, and really this is the only place that it's going to occur. Uh, public static string. Good, okay. Um, we have humanizer package included. I believe so. They could be private methods. Yes. I just wanted to clear up and make sure I had, uh, had this, right, get rid of all my reds first, and then we'll refactor. Because I'm, I'm looking at all of this stuff, and it makes me want to put it into a private class here inside of the domain object. Description of the remove, remove hyphens. Sure, sure. Right? The, oh my gosh. You're already, you're already going through and, and refactoring here mercilessly. I love it. I love it. That's awesome stuff. Um, I, my gosh, we're going to tear this thing to pieces, right? Yes, we're going to refactor. I will refactor. It. It's coming, okay? But listen. Be done exactly how I want it. it will. The only question is, are you the man to do it? 
Yes, I am. Okay. You know why I'm the man to do it? But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Very particular skills. skills I have acquired over a very long career. Yes. Very long set of skills. But I want to make sure that everybody is keeping up with us. I, I love how, how folks are saying, all right, let's make this private now. Let's remove the static on that. Let's get rid of some of these comments to clean that up. Absolutely. But I just want to make sure that the folks watching on YouTube, the other folks that are in the chat room, you know and you understand, right? We've got it working again. We've got it recompiling. Now let's step through and, and let's make this uh, go through and uh, and and start compiling and working again. And let me check the error list here because um, that domain object should be working better now. Um, create is still throwing a little bit of a issue here around these. I don't care about that right now. Um, URL helpers, I'm not concerned about right now. But article over here, I'm concerned that we've got hyphens here because it means that the tests haven't executed against this. <laughs> uh, it's Mike. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate your your um, your confidence in me because you know what we're doing here. World exclusive. It's a world exclusive. Nobody else carries this. It's just me, okay? It's amazing. All right, here we go. Did I have any other changes in in the core project that we need to touch first. No, we're good. Um, but the and the application project has some issues. Um, and we're going to... Right, we've... We, I feel like a mechanic. I've got the hood up on the car right now. Wrenches are flying. And we're, we're getting in here. We're breaking everything. And... Uh, and I've got lots of errors here we're going to get rid of. I feel like... Here's some feedback on Test Explorer. These tests are showing as green that they've run properly. When in fact, it's not compiling properly, I would like when the build is not compiling properly and running those tests, I would like some sort of an indicator here that shows, mm, I can't run the test just yet, you have a build, a build failure that you should go correct and then I'll try and run the tests again. MTC743. Is that is that a reference to it sounds like a serial number for a stormtrooper. I'm not I'm picking up on the reference. Do I work remotely? Yes, I do. I, I do work from home. Um I'm I'm fortunate that I, I have a home that has an extra bedroom that I turned into my home office slash Twitch studio here. And uh, I'm able to work from here. Nobody, nobody else is home, so I can yell out the window! And only the dog gets annoyed. So, um, but I... Yeah, so here we go. Um, so it feels weird doing a little refactoring on this without actually... Um, without actually doing some of these... Uh, uh, some of these tests hooked up to it, which makes me wonder if I should write a test first. So, what kind of dog do I have? I have an Akita. Um, I have an Akita named DD. Uh, da -da. Let's see if... Here we go. Right here. Proud dad moment. Go find a picture of the dog. Where's the dog? That's me. That's me. More me. Kids. Kids. Wife. Kids. Kids. Me. 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 Where's the dog? More kids. Um, co-workers. Um, there's the boss. Scott! Yep, there he is. Um... Let's see, kids, more kids, horses. Um, Jeff being chased by a dinosaur. I mean, it's true. I was chased by a dinosaur. Who knew? Um, there's a picture of the dog here somewhere. Me with the horse. 
Um, I have a picture of the dog. I promise I do. It's a good picture. She was a good dog. Uh, da -da. Cause I take pictures of her. I feel like I take pictures of her all the time. Jeff in Washington. Uh, oh, there she is. Ooh. There she is. There's my dog. So there you go. Very fluffy. So, Twitch emote, the real dog. Oh, really? Oh my gosh. Get her on stream. A little hard to do. With the green screen and all that. But, there you go. Um, she is... I think she just turned nine this year? Yeah, I think it was nine this year. So, but that is an Akita. Yep. So Frankie, the 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 Twitch emote dog passed. Oh, that's a shame. Um. Oh, who do we got here? Epic name Brog. Is that supposed to be Epic name Bro G? Welcome. Thank you for the follow. Uh, glad to see you here. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the in the chat room there. Epic name. She doesn't look a day over five. Um. <laughs> uh, all right. Da, 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 da. Good. So, here we go. Um, so, the suggestion from Ashley was, do we put the t to title case and to slug? Slug to topic. Uh, do we put the slug to topic? And there was another one that was topic to slug. Do we put those methods directly on the domain for these? Now, that's not a bad idea. Because then we end up with a with a field that contains that central piece of data. Ultima Decathlon X. Welcome. Um, thanks for joining us here on the stream. Um, I appreciate the follow. Look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, yeah, and that was kind of an angle pointed down at the dog, but... Um, so the, where, where Ashley is suggesting, and I would really want to have a unit test to surround this, is that we end up then with a property, um, right? Uh, I don't want to access it directly. Right. We end up with some sort with a, with a property, you know, uh, private string normalized topic or something like that. And right, the get and set on this, right? Maybe get re is the return on that. But the set, well, maybe the set just return uh, is, right, is that. And then slug becomes, right? Uh, Thank you. Um, let me split the screen here so we can see it. Da da da. Becomes a. Uh, oh, I don't have the two slug. Huh. All right, we'll go the other way. Maybe we'll make this. Maybe we make this. Uh, Oh, wait, 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 I got it. I got it. Maybe we make the slug like that. And topic, we say return slug to topic slug. And then when we set, right, we say uh, uh, da, 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 URL friendly is how we create it. So we say slug equals URL friendly value. The only issue I have with calling it in the property getter setter is making it configurable later on. Janescu, where did you get that emote? That is so cool. 
I like it. I like that a lot. Vixen Pup. Nice. From Ms. Vixen. Very cool. All right. Now now I feel like I need to have some some really really good emotes. Maybe we'll make D on an emote. Get the better Twitch TV extension for emotes. <laughs> uh, only the other way around works properly. Does it? The other way around works properly. Um, <laughs> you can't always automatically generate the topic from the slug because you don't know which characters are cleaned up. True. Okay. Okay. So... Right, so if, if I do this, then I do need an internal topic. Um... Yeah. Right? If I have a pri private string topic... Right, Re uh, I'm going to be getting rid of that. Return topic. Set the slug and underscore topic equals value. There should be a green Pepe. I'm I'm not a fan of Pepe because there's there's some. Um, connotations that have followed that character that I'm not too too fond of. The C-sharp bot is is pretty good. We might go with um, we might go with the C-sharp bot with a hat on. Don't know. Um, Alright. So that looks like it'll work. But then, do I ever need slug to topic? Right? Where am I actually using slug to topic? Let's find that and determine whether or not we need to continue using that. Um, entire solution. So there's where it's declared. It's in create. URL helpers test. Okay, it's in the test. It's in article where I just put it. And it's also in that application common URL helpers. This one isn't used. It has one reference where in article helpers. And it's for the URL friendly. So this isn't being used. Goodbye. Not used. Goodbye. Easy. Okay. We'll figure out more about that. But we're refactoring mercilessly. C shop C sharp bot with the super C sharp logo hat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Back in the article object, then, if I'm, if the only place I'm really calling it is in the create page, and it's in slug to topic right there, and it's because I'm taking that create, in which case, right, I feel like this should all Oh, man. I feel like this should only be in the create page. Because you're never... Well, wait. This reference is to title case and then remove hyphens, which are both on the string helper. Ugh. All right. There's two references to this. URL helper tests and in create. I'm moving this into create. Because it's the only place that it's used. It's the only place that I'm concerned about it. That I want to use it. And the two title case and remove hyphens. Right? Is...
Yeah. So let's bring that in here as well. Do that. Um, <laughs> Alright, we need this. Yep. Culture is in US for right now. And then this we're going to... Uh, da, da, da. I'm going to remove that. Uh, let rat. Hey, what's up? Uh, not much. What's up with you? We're, um, we're, we're moving around some of our objects in our code here so that we can use the CQRS pattern. And our first attempt here on the create page, we're moving things that were very specific to our article domain, to our, our object, our business object. We're moving into that business object and out of a bunch of helper methods. Um, to title case, we want to say, yeah, uh, out value equals slug. Okay. Now remove hyphens, right? That one is just doing content replace. So let's come back over here. And I should be able to just say out value dot replace and that should take care of it have you guys already installed the mediator package yes yes we have um that was the easy part <laughs> all right uh all right so slug to topic i don't really need that public and static i can make this private here so that when i do my create i say Slug to topic, slug. And that should work. Remind me where why we are doing slug to topic at all. No problem, Smab. Let me let's let's uh let's back up here and make sure that that we understand where we're going with this. On the create article from link page, there's a list of links that were identified in some other page that you want to be able to create. You want to be able to click it and say, oh yeah, let's go create that page now. So we're going to seed the create page with a slug. So if, if in fact a slug was submitted, then um, let's make sure that we create that. So, right, when we should make this, ensure that we always get a slug. Um, let's do that so that we're, so that we are sure we always get something passed in there. That way we can, uh, when we do click that create from, uh, create from slug, right? Create from a previous article, it'll jump in here and we'll have that title pre-populated. Now it's pre-populated, but you can still modify it. The usual method is to show article links that don't exist in red, rather than redirecting when creating, editing an existing article. Yes. And that's what the create from... create... does. The create page... create... where is it? Create article from link does. After you save, it says, oh, you reference these other things that do not exist. Um, and it gives you an option to create them at that page. At that point from that page. Um, we can clean up that workflow a little bit. But for right now, right, and even then, when you, if those links were in red, because they didn't exist, you could click it, and you're going to want to get into a page that has that slug. So I think this works out kind of nicely. Um, moving on. So on post, and then we have all this goo that happens here that we want to clean up. And I think, I think I can remove this from that other page, from that URL helpers location. So let's do that and really break things. Because um, this only referenced in one place and it's in a test. 
I want to go to that test. Okay. Um, I still want to test that method, which is inside of create. Oh, fine, I'll make it public. If I say page, not pagers, pages. No. What? Um, create. What is this? Create model. Right, and if I control dot on that, make this a var. Free baddie. Thanks so much for the follow. Anyone can choose to create that article by clicking on it. Yes. If you show the non-existent articles at red links. Yes. Yep. Um, yes, I think there's opportunities there to improve that interaction. Um, and it's that is what comes out of this bit right here. Which I think we can simplify, we can remove, we can make a little bit easier to work with. Um, you know what? Excuse me for a minute. I need to take a phone call from Mrs. C Sharp. One second. All right, I need to, yep, 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 okay, yep, 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 okay. Uh, that's exactly, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what was going on. Um, so I'm, I'm going to need to uh, end here in just a few minutes, um, which means I'm going to end up checking in code that doesn't quite work here yet and isn't quite in the state that I want it to be, um, but gets us closer to being ready for mediator. Um, so what I'm going to do... Um, <laughs> so I'm happy with that. We've got that test fixed. The application project is still a little bit of a mess. Uh, this needs to be fixed. And that's where we'll pick up next time. What uh, the question was? What what test library am I using? Yeah, I believe it is XUnit. Uh, let's close some of these, and we should be able to see it. I'm I'm closing. I'm closing. We're closing. We're closing. More of that. Go away. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Uh, NuGet, XUnit, there you go. All right. Um, <laughs> so that doesn't quite work. I feel like if we just... If we just fix that up a little bit, and it's this putting the article DTO into the create new article command, right? Um, we would rather have all of the primitive fields listed here instead of embedding a DTO. Embedding a DTO just doesn't feel right here at all. Docs folder for the diagram. That's a great idea, Smab. Good call. I like it. Um... Let me commit these other changes first, and then I'll put that diagram in there. Uh, <laughs> so let's do this. Um, I'm going to end up having to merge this. Uh, let's do a git status. Uh, add core wiki. No, 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 no. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. 
that one. All right. Cool. Let's commit refactoring for the merge and introduction of mediator. Okay. Cool. So we've committed that change. We'll go back over here and I will finish the merge on this. Good. Now that's merged into project new data. The checks are going to continue to fail because it's not compiling. Uh, thanks for starting on this. We have some opinions on your implementation that uh, will help improve the separation of concerns and uh, make maintainability better. Uh, great work. There we go. Cool. So that gets that into the mix. Now I'm going to go with what Smab was saying. Um, updates to dark theme. That's, yeah, we need to come back to that yet. So let me add a docs folder, not mod. And then let's move architecture into docs. Oh, because I have it open. <laughs> uh, yep, save it. Okay, um, try that again. Git add docs. Git commit. Added architecture diagram pptx. Push. You can do a whack whack to do and it'll show up in the tasks in Visual Studio. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> there we go. All right. So, we have cleaned up everything that we were working on. We've introduced Mediator into this project, and it's not quite done yet. There's a lot happening here. There's a lot of files that are changing. We saw the introduction of our application project, where a lot of those, where the commands and query objects are going to reside, as well as our handlers right now that'll process queries and process commands. And we see we have a little bit of difference of opinion for how queries and commands should be structured and what types of objects they should be returning and interacting with. And I think, I think we're closer to having that completed for the create page than, than we initially had coming out, of the, uh, coming out of the pull request. The pull request looks like it would have worked if it didn't have that merge conflict, but we're going to resolve that and get it all uh, working next time on Tuesday. Um, that's when we'll have our next our next show together and we'll work together and uh, we'll build some really cool stuff. Finishing off implementing Mediator here. Um, if I'm correct, I believe I believe our friend Dev Chatter is nope, he hasn't started yet. Excuse me. Uh, let's see, who's in development? Who's in programming that's working right now. No. Who do we know in programming is working right now? Hey, there's this guy, C Sharp Fritz, working. Actually, let's go over to Pixel Logic. He's running Pixel Logic is running a um a full day, 24 hour hackathon. So let's raid Pixel Logic. Uh hearing that I thought I'd missed a feature of whack whack terminal. Nope. Nope nope. Not, that's not there. So we will do a raid of Pixel Logic Dev. Let's see if we can check in over there. It's a 24 hour hackathon going on. Uh -huh. And here we go. So, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. This was a lot of fun today. Um, we're, uh, we'll be back on Tuesday, like I said. We'll have a lot of fun then. Finishing off implementing Mediator. It'll be... 
Let me see here. There we go. We'll finish implementing Mediator. We'll have uh, we'll have it running on our project, and we'll have all of our unit tests running properly, which will uh, bring a smile to my face. And we'll be using a little bit more advanced architecture. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time.